Hello and welcome to this episode of Fedora Studio for the Fedora Linux 41 Global Watch Party. Uh, this is the opening session of all of our virtual sessions that we're presenting today. Uh, and this is part of a new way that we're trying out for our release parties to uh, have more conversations with folks across the community and also try to be a little bit more time zone inclusive for, for everyone that's in our global project. So with that, this is the opening session and I have here with me, uh, I'm Justin Flory, I'm the Fedora Community Architect and I have Matthew Miller here with me, who's the project leader and Aoife Maloney, who is the operations architect. So we're here just kind of uh, reflect on what this last release has been, do some shout outs of what's coming up next on the, on the schedule and talk a little bit of our favorite moments from this release. So Matthew, you wanna kick us off with some opening, opening statements? Yeah. Welcome everybody to the release party. Um, this has been another amazing release, so it's really good for us to celebrate it. A lot of, a lot of, uh, the process is going very smoothly. It's really nice to see that. Thank you partly to Aoife, but thank you also to everyone else who works on Fedora. It's amazing. Uh, thank you to everyone who just put so much love and energy into this project. Um, it's it's what, what makes it so amazing. Um, this is a kind of a different kind of release party. We used to do them on a you know, conferencing platform and have a bunch of talks more like a little mini conference. Um, that kind of thing we started during the COVID times. And during those, we had you know, a thousand people at some of the things. They were, you know, the people were excited about it. And um, you know, Fedora events were, you know, some of the best online events that happened during that all that time. Um, and, you know, things are different now. And so the last couple release parties, we haven't had quite, you know, near that amount of attendance. They were good, but kind of the return people were getting from them wasn't nearly the same kind of gigantic impact. Uh, but we still wanted to do the celebration. So we're trying this new format where we have some pre-recorded shorter talks, uh, but we really hope we, everybody can you know, get together and still have that energy as we talk about it and you know, watch things together. So it's the watch party kind of version of the release party. And I hope this, uh, it'd be interesting to see how this experiment goes. Um, if it turns out to be terrible, well, we'll try something else, but I think it'll be good, so. Eva? Thanks, Matthew. Um, yeah, so, Steve Backwood, welcome on it. Um, again, I'm just going to echo, echo Matthew's um, thank yous and praises to everybody who's made this release the wonderful release it was. Uh, I'm here to remind you on a couple of deadlines for our next release, the um, Answer to Life at the Universe and Everything also known as Fedora F42. Uh, we have deadlines for our self-contained changes on January 14th. And if you are planning a system-wide change, take a leaf out of Santa's book and deliver them by the 24th of December. We need them by Christmas Eve. So all of our lovely sysadmins and release engineers and prod engineers and everybody that makes it perfect has them ready to go waiting, waking up their Christmas lunch. Uh, so <laughs> important deadline for this system-wide one. Uh, Self-contained ones are very important too, but we do have a little bit of a flex on that for the 14th of January. Uh, I will also... Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially in the year, they go real fast. Uh, once a year releases are, um, they are, they, they get, I get whiplash. And I've had two of them now and they're like, oh, there's another one. Um, keeps it entertaining though. What I will say though is please, be more mindful of our release notes. If you see me coming back to you in this upcoming release for some extra detail, um, it's because you probably left it out, which is fine. They're not needed in the initial proposal stage, but it would be an enormous help to our end users and also our docs team to just have a, a little bit more content there on, on the expected behaviors of the changes that you bring to the project. They are hugely we beneficial. We often end up with the release notes section saying TBD at you know release yeah. time and that's not great we can do better than that um if you don't feel yeah. comfortable writing it yourself like it's okay just write i need help with this or something like that because we've got people Absolutely. ready to do one of those things and it's yeah. good help needed yep we have a great docs team available so uh, that's just uh, an only uh, an fyi um a similarly important fyi is if you are running fedora Linux 39 you will see the end of that on the 26th of this month. So you have roughly uh, 10 days to two weeks to upgrade to 51. Um, so please bear that in mind for any systems that you have running F39, it will be no longer supported. I've heard um, lots of good reports about upgrades going very smoothly. Mine went very easily this time. So I think 
don't worry, it, it's it's safe to upgrade. Yeah. Off the web, or DNF, whichever, whichever, choose your poison, but it's, it's very basic. It's boringly uneventful. Um, the last thing that I want to highlight as well is, as with the advent of the new release, we also have some new elections coming. So we have some seats available in FESCO, which is our, our, steering, our engineering steering committee. There's five seats available. Um, we will potentially say goodbye and or maybe welcome back to some of our current members. But if you would like to put your name forward to take part in that committee, uh, the nominations are open now. Uh, you can visit the wiki page. You can self-nominate or you can nominate a friend or colleague that you think would be a great fit for that. We do always advise that you get their permission, that they are comfortable with you nominating them. It's a year's commitment. So people need to be comfortable with, with giving that space. Uh, so five seats available. Election, the nomination period is open for two weeks. Uh, we will have a short period then where the candidates will get to answer some interview questions and then the actual elections will take place sometime in December. There is also one seat available for the Mindshare Committee too. So again, um, if you or someone you know with their permission would like to take part, it's a year long commitment, same, same uh, timelines apply. Let me set you up for something. Hey, there's no council election. Are we not electing no. council? No. What's going on here? <laughs> no. Um, so the council actually has moved to a once per year election cycle, which is one less job for me, thank God. Um, but yeah, it, we, in order to kind of like streamline our members and make sure that we can work a little bit more cohesively, we decided to move our elections to once per year. So we held an election back in May post F41 release. Um, this means we'll always skip the uh, the autumn winter collection, but we will have another election in the spring summer collection. So in we the northern hemisphere. Two... <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true, actually. <laughs> um, so we'll have uh, our elections post F forty three, and there'll be two seats for council. And so at the moment we have Fesco five seats, and we have my chair one seat. Well, maybe from there we can transition over. Matthew, we got a few minutes. Do you want to talk about some of the big changes that you're seeing coming up in Fedora Linux 41 and highlight yeah, some of those? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been some kind of uh, neat, almost all of these things are infrastructure things. Um, probably the thing people will notice the most if they're, um, you know, old school Fedora people, people have been upgrading for a while. We have a new version of DNF that's been totally rewritten. Um, I was actually, I'll admit, I was incredibly skeptical about this because rewrites like this are you know, dangerous, but the team has really pulled this off and seems like it, it, it's very smooth. And the new, the new DNF is fast um, and it uses less memory. It's, it's very nice. So I think people, you know, um, people often like to complain about the package managers on like the, on, you know, the, the, the Reddits and so Veronics's and whatever. And I think it's, it's a nice improvement that will, you know, it's it's not really a big thing. It's okay to wait 30 seconds to install a package, but it just makes the whole experience feel uh, better. And it really will make a big impact on like smaller machines, like older Raspberry Pis and things like that, where they actually are in a memory constrained environment. Um, I'm also excited about image mode. That's the next evolution of RPM OS tree, the atomic desktops and the core OS. Um, that's something we in the Fedora Council want to be the default in Fedora fairly soon. So I'm glad to see this technology getting worked on. It's definitely not ready for it yet, but um, for a lot of cases it is. I've got silver blue on my laptop and I really like it. Um, it for nothing else, uh, when you reboot, updates just get implied, applied. There's no like waiting for updates ever. So that's pretty nice. Um, and you know, there's a bunch of other options as well that are really good. Uh, and then one technical thing also on the desktop that is uh, kind of a relief uh, the, the camera technology, I mean, you know, in these days of video conferencing, pretty much everybody needs a camera on their laptop. And for a long time, those just worked in Linux. We had a good situation there. But there's a new technology called MIPI, M-I-P-I, and the new cameras use that, and it puts a lot more work on the OS. Um, it's, it, it's an improvement to the way they work. But for a long time, those cameras just didn't work on Linux. So, like, for example, Lenovo was having to ship a special older version of the camera for the Linux versions of it so that things would work. But now there is a whole uh, open source you know, stack that makes these cameras work. It's plugged in with Pipewire. And so, um, you know, if you're using GNOME, when you uh, 
when you start a video, you know, you start recording in Firefox, you'll see a little orange camera is on thing in the bar, you know, it's going through the Pipewire system there. Uh, so just having support for that is a, like, that was a worry that we'd be left behind. And I'm really glad that people worked really hard to get that technology working. Um, and a lot of, um, yeah, people on the desktop team worked hard on that. That's, you know, there's other things. Um, IFA's, I think, got a yeah. session with more detail about changes coming up, too. I do. I have I have a couple. I'll just give one quick shout out, but no spoiler, because they did submit content. But like, I'm really happy to welcome the Valky project to Fedora. So we are now there downstream as well. Uh, so it's great. But they've submitted a talk. They did some wonderful work, um, Carl Davis and, and Jonathan Wright. So no spoilers, but there's yet another ally in the Fedora uh, distribution. Cool. Stay tuned for more in this release party. So I'll just wrap up with some quick things, just thinking about other things that happened during this last release. We had Flock, our annual contributor conference back in August in Rochester. And there's lots of other content out there. You can find all of the talks that we had. They were all recorded. You can find them on the Fedora YouTube channel. Uh, but this is always a really big highlight of the year for us. It's our place where we bring all of our contributor community together. And I definitely encourage you to go and read some of the recap, check out some of the photos that we have on the Fedora community blog, as well as in some other places. And I wanted to give a, uh, perhaps a little look in the crystal ball for 2025. I'll say the, the important thing is that we do hope to have an announcement by the end of this year. There's a lot of things that are out of our control that depend on that, but this is the plan. We really do wanna have an announcement by the end of the year because there are going to be some changes to how we do flock next year. Uh, good changes, I hope. Good changes. Uh, without giving too much of a spoiler, I'll say that we're currently looking toward June 2025, possibly in this little country called Czechia. So. Stay tuned for more details. There's nothing official yet, but we are looking forward to having another amazing contributor event next year and trying some things different based on the feedback that all the community gave us in our survey that we did after this year's event. And we Last do know week. that like, um, there was a very strong split between people who were like, June is the best, let's do it. And June would be terrible, you're destroying everything. Um, you know, we had to pick one, so I'm sorry. Sorry, people on the I mean, um, unhappy side of that. I hope we can. I hope we can uh, make you can make it work, or we can do other things that help you get connected and stay with things. Because I know there's no ideal time for everyone. And I really do feel optimistic about some of these things that we're trying out because it's giving us a chance to uh, try out some new ideas and things. Like I, this wasn't my first or second flock, and I know there's some things that people have wanted to see in the event. And I'm hopeful that we can to deliver on some of those for next year too thank you justin last thing i'll mention just other events and places where you might find fedora out in the wild uh, out in early december in bangalore india there will be gnome asia that's happening there and that's going to be a pretty big event for the fedora community as well of course it's the gnome you know asian contributor summit that they have and user user event as well but we are doing it, uh, having a pretty big role. There's gonna be a Fedora release party there. So if you are in the Bangalore area or you're able to travel there, December, I have to check the dates exactly, but I think it's the 5th to the 7th. Don't quote me on that, but it's yes, there all it's online. Right when my daughter is starring in the high school musical. So <laughs> I will be staying here and I wanted to go, but I hope I'll get to India sometime soon. I really want to, but um, you know, priorities. So that'll be one event that's coming up before the end of this year. But after that, uh, in late January, early February, if you are used to the Fedora event uh, cycle, we usually do FOSDEN in Brussels, Belgium, and CentOS Connect, which is the uh, downstream CentOS contributor community event, happens right before FOSDEN. So that's always a pretty big event for us as well that we do right towards the end of January, first weekend of February. So there's more details coming together around this. So if you are interested in that, or you're in Europe, or you know FOSDEM, and you always go keep an eye out for the Fedora plan. We will be also helping out with the Linux distributions developer room or dev room again as well. 
So we're going to have some great content that's already been accepted. We're going to have the whole Sunday for all things Linux distributions at Fosdem. So it's going to be a great time again. Uh, just keep an eye out for more details on how you can find and discover the Fedora community, hopefully somewhere near you. Other than that, I think this brings us to the end of our little opening remarks session. Anything, Matthew or Aoife, you want to add on here before we wrap up? I think this has been good. I think I need to also go to recording this right running into Fedora social hour the day before. So I need to run off to that. Um, but yeah, thank you for putting this all together, Justin. It's, um, I hope it's, it's going to be great. Enjoy the watch parties, everyone. Thanks, folks, for joining us, and we'll see you around in the Fedora Linux 42 release cycle. Okay, bye.